Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a vintage bird cage illustration in Adobe Illustrator. Before we get started on this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is a vintage style bird cage that I've created in Illustrator and we're going to create something similar. I'm going to show you the techniques that you can use to speed up creating an object like this. So let's get started. To create the basic bird cage shape, I'm actually going to use the pen tool with no fill but just a stroke. And I'm going to sort of draw one half of the shape. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to, in actual fact, just click and drag in sort of this direction. I want it to sweep around and over here, so I'm going to create this curve. And I want a sort of point at this point where it's going to sort of stop and then start bending into the end. And so I'm going to just drag here to finish it off. Now, I haven't got it perfect, but I just wanted a starting point for this. So I'm going to select the Direct Selection tool. And now let's just go and perfect this shape. I want it to sort of twist around a little bit at the top. And apart from having these two points lined up, I think I'm pretty good right now. So I'm just going to move these. I've got guides turned on. I just want to make sure that these two lines, or these two anchors, are directly underneath each other because that's going to give me my rotation. Having done that, I'm just going to click the Selection tool and make sure that I have my stroke selected. I'm going to choose Object Transform Reflect because I want to reflect this across the axis. So I'm going to click on Preview and I'm taking Vertical. And now I want to make a duplicate of it, so I'm going to click Copy. And this is giving me two shapes with the second, the reflected one, selected. So now I can just pull it apart. So I'm just going to drag horizontally. And if I hold the Shift key as I do that, then the dragging is going to be perfectly horizontal, which means these two shapes are now going to line up. This is the starting point for my bird cage. And now I want more lines just like this. And to get these, I'm going to select the Blend tool. So I'm going to click on the Blend tool and I'm going to click over one of these shapes and then click over the second shape. And I get this bar down the middle and that's exactly what I expect to get. So if you get that, that's good. Now I'm just going to double click on the Blend tool because I want to make some adjustments to it. I want to click on Preview and instead of Smooth Color, I want Specified Steps. And let's try 10 steps. And you can see this has given us the shape that we want. And if we're happy with that, we can just click OK. Now I'm going to create some of those little curvy bits that we had. And to do that, I'm going to select the Ellipse tool. And I'm going to zoom in here because I want to make sure that my ellipse is going to fit between these two bars. So I'm just going to click and drag out a circle. I'm going to hold the Shift key as I do that so that this oval is constrained to a circle. And if it's not fitting exactly, I'll go back to the Selection tool and I'm just going to size it down so that it does fit right over the top of these two bars here. I'm just going to rotate it too because I want the white anchors to be right on the line because I'm about to cut it at those points. So just making sure that they're in position, which they are. So now I'm going to the Eraser tool here and I'm going to click the scissors. The scissors share the toolbar position with the Eraser tool. And the scissors let me hover over an anchor point and just click on it to break the path at that point. And I want to break this circle in half at these two anchor points. And then I'll select the Selection tool. And you can see that the top part of the circle is now selected. So I'm just going to press Delete to remove it. And that gives me this bottom piece left in place. Now I'm going to put some little dots here later. So I'm not totally worried that it's like a 
few points off. It's not huge amount, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it. I'm going to zoom out though, so I'm going to press the letter Z and just zoom out a little bit because I want to see the entire shape with what I'm doing next. I'm going to hold the space bar and just drag it into position here so I can see everything. I'm going to grab the selection tool and I'm going to select this half circle shape and now I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform because this is going to allow me to make multiple copies of the shape and to position them all in one step. I'll click Preview and I'm going to add in say about 20 copies just to see how that works and I want to move these in a horizontal direction and I'm just going to eyeball it to see how far I have to move it to make these appear at every half a line in this birdcage. So I'm saying here that 27 is too much and 26 is too little. So if 27 is too much and 26 is too little, I can just type in some value between them. So let's try 26.5 and see how that looks. Well, it's just a little bit too small, so let's do 26.52. I'm just going to experiment with different values until I get something that works that's actually going to put these elements right in position. So thinking just a little bit more than this. And I'm finding that 26.62 is pretty much what I want, so I'm just going to click OK. And that's giving me these little loops all the way across except at the beginning and the end of the shape. Well we can deal with that by selecting the first one and let's just choose Object Expand Appearance. And that just breaks these into the separate objects which will allow me then to select this and choose Object Ungroup. And that will ungroup these shapes. So this allows me now to create a duplicate of this. So I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place. And now I can just drag out the duplicate. I'm going to hold the Shift key as I do so that it moves across directly horizontal. I'm just going to place that in position. And then I'm going to here to the last one and I'm going to do the same thing. Edit Copy, Edit Paste in Place. And then again with the Shift key, I'm just going to drag the duplicate shape into position. Now let's zoom in and I'm going to look for my anchor point. There should be an anchor here. There's the anchor there. And again, I'm going to use the scissor tool to break it. And I'm going to select this half of the shape here and just press Delete to remove it. And then I'll select the Direct Selection tool. Again, click on the anchor here and just drag it back so it sits right on top of this line. Now the fact that the beginning and end ones of these half circles are going to be slightly out really isn't going to be seen in the final production. Click on the scissors. I need to find the anchor point here which is somewhere along this path. Click on it with the scissors tool to break the path at this point. Go and get the selection tool so I can select the bit that I don't want and press delete. Now there's a little bit of it left behind here so I'm going to get rid of that too. And now I'll click on the direct selection tool. Again click on this anchor point and just move it right back over the line of the birdcage. Now let's zoom out and just see where we are. And this is the shape that we have right now. I'm going to zoom in because I'm going to add some little caps across the top of these elements. So again with the zoom tool, let's just zoom in to this area here and let's go and put in our little caps. I'm using the ellipse tool and I'm just going to drag it out here and hold the shift key as I do so that I get a nice circular shape. Now I have a black stroke and a white fill so I'm just going to press shift X to invert that so that the fill is now black and the stroke is non-existent. I'm going to get the selection tool and just drag this circle up and just place it in position over the point at which this up shape meets the edge of the birdcage because now I'm going to repeat it across the shape. 
So again, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see exactly how we're going. Use the space bar to move the image. Now with this little dot targeted, I'm again going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. I'm thinking that the same 26.6 something is going to be about what I need here. And I'm going to need about the same number of copies, so let's just test, I think 20, well 22 is what I need here. So I've just made 22 copies, I've preview turned on, I've gone the same distance as I did previously and we're just eyeballing this and making sure that these little dots are appearing exactly over the intersection between these half circles, which they are. So I'll click OK and then Control 0 to zoom out. Now I'm going to put some dots across the bottom here. Well, I'm going to put a line first and then the dot. So let's actually go and put the line in with a line segment tool. So I'm going to click and drag across the bottom of the bird cage here, trying to line up these anchor points. And if I hold the Shift key as I do that, I'm going to constrain this to a horizontal line. Now I'm going to press D for the default colors, which is a white fill and a black stroke. I'm going to turn off the fill because I don't want that. And I'm just going to target my stroke and increase this to say two or three points. And then let's just click away from this. Now I'm going to add dots in here too. So let's zoom into this area. I want to see it clearly on the screen. I'm going to start by dragging out my circle and I just find it a little bit easier to drag it out away from the shape so I can see it really clearly. Shift X or just invert these two colors here. Selection tool, press the letter V or go and click on the selection tool and then I'm just going to place this in position and I want it right over the top of this join here. With it selected, we'll go back and choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. And again, I'm going to turn Preview on. I'm going to need 11 copies because there are 11 bars that I need to add these to. And again, I'm just going to press out the horizontal until I have this in position. Now obviously, 40 is too much, 39 is not quite enough. So let's try 39.25 and this looks good. So I'm just going to click OK and then click away from the shape. Now I had a ball at the bottom of the bird cage, so I'm just again going to target the ellipse tool, hold shift down as I drag out a circle and then just move that into position centered here. So now I'm going to create this little foot piece and I think I'll start off with an oval. So I'm just going to drag out an oval shape. Choose the direct selection tool, click on each end in turn and just convert these points. And now I can just drag the shape into position so I can create something that is a sort of interesting shape to use as the sort of foot for this bird cage. And I might add a dot to this one. So again, let's just drag out a dot and let's put it into place. So this is going to be my little foot piece this time. I'm just going to, let's just shrink this in size a little bit and join these two pieces together by selecting both and I'm just going to choose the Unite to create a compound shape from this. I'm going to place this into position and then let's select it and do Object Transform reflect and again we're going to reflect it across the vertical and make a copy of it because I need a copy for the other end of the shape and let's just move it into position. Let's zoom back out again and see how we're going on the shape. This is pretty much what I had previously. Let's just add a oval as a hanging point for this. Again, we need black this time as the stroke and we need no fill. So I'm just going to place a stroked oval in position. Just fine tune the placement of that. And then I just finished with a vertical line. 
And now we can go and grab our bird from the previous element. I'm just going to select my bird and copy it with Edit Copy. And let's just go and place it into this image with Edit Paste. And I'll just place my bird in position on the cage here. And now we can finish off with a background layer with a fill in it. I have a script that does this for me automatically, but if you're doing it yourself, you can just make a rectangle the size of the artboard or view my video on scripting in Illustrator so you can see how to create the script that does this yourself. Here is the path that we're going to fill. I'm just going to add a new layer, put the background in its own layer and just drag it behind everything and let's just go and fill it with a color. I have a swatches panel here that has some colors in it. So let's just add a pale blue behind our finished product. So this is how you could go ahead and create a vintage style bird cage in Illustrator. You're going to use two tools basically. The blend tool will allow you to create an outside edge, reflect it and then blend it to create as many of these bars as you want for your bird cage. And if you do the top and the bottom all at once, you just find it's a little bit easier. And then to repeat these elements across the shape, you're just using the effect distort and transform transform options which allow you to take a single shape and repeat it across the whole of the project. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.